to the eight three notes uh, where we're going to really look at uh, rational functions and how to graph them. We'll talk about properties um, of them and um, and yeah, and how to graph them. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, big deal, essential understanding here. Um, a function has a polynomial in its denominator. I if that's the case, uh, its graph has a gap at each zero of the polynomial. So um, for example, the, the gap could be a one-point hole in the graph, or it could be a location of a vertical asymptote for the graph, and we'll talk about what those can look like. A rational function is a function that you can write in the form f of x equals p of x over q of x. So there's another example um, right here, for example. So y equals x plus 3 over x plus 16. That's a function on top and a function on the bottom. Um, these graphs right here are examples of rational functions. Um, you know, we have y equals x squared over x squared plus 1. This is what that looks like, so that kind of funky looking thing here. Uh, we have this graph that just has a hole right there. And then we have this graph right here um, that is, is x plus 4 over x minus 2. So we just have these vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right. Looks exciting. Uh, for the first rational function, um, that we're looking at this y equals x squared over x squared plus 1, there is no value of x that makes the denominator 0. So this graph is continuous, meaning it has no jumps, breaks, or holes. Uh, we draw it with our pencil, and our pencil can never has to leave the paper. It can stay down. The second function, um, x can't be negative 2. If x were negative 2 on the denominator, um, it would that would be 0, and that's a problem. And for this one, x can't be 2. So because of that, there are spots in the graphs where it's not continuous. So those are called discontinuous. A point of discontinuity, this is a big deal here. Um, if a is a real number for which the denominator of a rational function is 0, then a is not in the domain. The graph of f of x is not continuous at x equals a, and the function has a point of discontinuity. So it's just the point at which things kind of stop. Um, y equals uh, x plus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2 goodness, um, has a removable discontinuity. x equals negative 2. That's a hole. Okay? That's a hole. Um, the reason it's called removable is because we can make the function continuous by redefining it at x equals negative 2 so that f of negative 2 is 1. All right? We'll, we'll talk about that. The graph here of this one has a non-removable discontinuity because what happens is there's no way to redefine the function at 2. Right? So we'll, we'll look at what those mean and, and more about that. When we're looking uh, for discontinuities, it's helpful to factor the numerator and the denominator. So factoring um, continues to be a, a key thing for us, so we're going to have to do that. All right? um, finding the points of discontinuity here, what, what we want to do is uh, we should notice that we have something that we can factor on the bottom. We do factor it. It looks like this. So the function is undefined at x equals 3 and x equals 1. These are non-removable points of discontinuity because we can't factor them out. That's what the non-removable is talking about. We can't factor them out. Uh, so the x-intercept occurs when the numerator equals 0 at x equals negative 3. To find the y-intercept, simply let x equals 0 and simplify. So we do that, and that's y equals 1. So those, there's our intercepts. Let's take a look at the next page. Um, for part b, B, and all we're doing right here, by the way, sorry, I skipped something, skipped ahead a little bit too much. All we're doing right here is we're looking at these functions, we're determining the points of discontinuity, are they removable or not, and what are the intercepts. So that's what we answered there. Part B, uh, we can't factor the numerator or the denominator, neither one of those factors. Also, there are no values of x that make the denominator zero, nothing we can put in there to make that zero. So the domain of the function is all real numbers. And there are no discontinuities. This is a continuous function. The x-intercept occurs when x is 0. So that's at uh, x equals 5. Sorry, when the numerator equals 0. Excuse me, misspoke. So that's at x equals 5. And to find the y-intercept, we simply let x equals 0 and solve. And that's negative 5. For part c, again, we're going to factor. And when we factor this, we notice that this x minus 4 and x minus 4, that repeats. Um, that's going to be important. So the function is undefined at x minus 4, so at x equals 4, so there's a hole there. Um, 
because x, uh, y equals x plus 1, except that x equals 4, there's a removable discontinuity. So that's the factoring out. We can remove the discontinuity. At x equals 4, uh, y equals x plus 1, and that equals 4 plus 1, which is 5. So we can redefine the function to remove the discontinuity. Okay? So we say uh, x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x minus 4 if x doesn't equal 4, and then 5 if x does equal 4. Okay, so that's if once we've removed the discontinuity. The x-intercept occurs when the numerator equals 0, so that's at negative 1. And the y-intercept, we just make x0 and solve, and that's 1. Go ahead and try to do those for me right here. 1a, 1b, 1c. We're looking for points of discontinuity, removable or non-removable, and what are the x and y-intercepts of the rational function. Go ahead and pause the video and try those right now. Go ahead and pause. All right, you've unpaused. Let's go ahead and take a look at 1a. Um, the, the domain and points of discontinuity here is the domain is all real numbers except 4. Um, and negative 4. So x equals, um, except x equals 4 and negative 4, and that's because of the denominator. Uh, the points of discontinuity are non-removable, non-removable at 4 and negative 4. And there is no x-intercept, no x-intercept. And the y-intercept is at negative 1 16th, OK? Uh, on 1b, the domain is all reals, OK? So here the domain is just um, x is an element of the reals. Um, there are no points of discontinuity, so there's no discontinuity. It's a continuous function. The x-intercepts are 1 and negative 1. And the y-intercept is at negative 1 third. All right. uh, and for part C, um, the domain is all reals uh, such that x is not equal to negative 2 and negative 1. Uh, the points of discontinuity are non-removable, okay, non-removable at x equals 2, or sorry, at x equals negative 2 and negative 1. And there is no x-intercept, and the y-intercept is 1 half. Okay. Hopefully you tried those and got those. If you didn't try them, you, you really should have. You missed out. Um, if you tried them and didn't get them, try them one more time, and then the parts that you are struggling with, make sure you make note of, and we will talk about, I'm sure we will talk about in class. Uh, in Chapter 7, we learned that an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches as x or y increases in absolute value. If a rational function has a non-removable discontinuity at x equals a, the graph of the rational function will have a vertical asymptote at x equals a. So non-removable discontinuity will give us an asymptote. That's what that's telling us. Okay. Um, let's take a look at how that manifests itself in a problem. Okay. So finding vertical asymptotes. What are the vertical asymptotes for this graph? So since two and three are the zeros of the denominator, and neither zero is uh, and neither is a zero of the numerator, lines x equals two and x equals three are vertical asymptotes. Okay. That's important. So two makes that zero, three makes that zero, and None of the, neither of those is removable. That's the key, okay? Um, so you go ahead and pause the video here. Try 2A, B, and C, and let me know um, if there's a, is there a vertical asymptote, and if it is, where? Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, you've unpaused. Hopefully for A, you got there's a vertical asymptote at 1 and at x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. They're lines, so we want to write them out as equations of lines. Here, it's x equals negative 3 because that was removable. And here, uh, there are no vertical asymptotes. If you didn't get no vertical asymptotes, factor the top, and, and hopefully you'll get it the second time. If you have any questions about that, make sure you make note of it, and we will check those or go over those more in class. Uh, while the graph of a rational function can have any number of vertical asymptotes, it can have no more than one horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote of the graph, compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. Okay, The degree of the numerator is m, the degree of the denominator is n. 
So if the numerator is less than the denominator, the graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is the x-axis. If the numerator is greater than the denominator, the degree, by the way, talking about the degree, if the numerator is greater than the denominator, it has no horizontal asymptote. And if they're the same, the graph has a horizontal asymptote at a over b, where a is the coefficient of the term of the greatest degree of the numerator, and b is the coefficient of the same term of, of the denominator. Yeah, that's a lot, all right? So let's look at what that looks like. Problem three. So what is the horizontal asymptote here? All right, so the degree of the numerator and the degree of the nom denominator are the same. They're both linear functions. Since this is a 2 and this, this is a coefficient of 1, there is a horizontal asymptote at 2 over 1, which is 2. All right. Here, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. The horizontal asymptote is always the x-axis. Here, the degree of the numerator is greater. There is no horizontal asymptote. Easy enough? I think so. Go ahead and pause the video here and try 3, A, B, and C and tell me what you get. If there is an asymptote, tell me where it is, and if there's not, just say there isn't. Horizontal, horizontal asymptotes. Go ahead and try that now. All right, you've unpaused. Hopefully here you got y equals negative 2. Hopefully here you got y equals 0, or x-axis. And hopefully here you got no horizontal asymptotes. All right? If you have any questions there, make sure you write something down, and we'll check them in class. Um, here, we can get a reasonable graph a reasonable graph for a rational function by finding all the x and all the intercepts and all the asymptotes. Sometimes we'll also have to plot a few extra points just to get some idea of the shape. But really, once we have the asymptotes uh, and the intercepts, we should have some idea of what it looks like. So, step one. Uh, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are equal. Okay, so when they're equal, that tells us that the horizontal asymptote is at the coefficient of the leading uh, of the highest degree terms. So that's 1 over 1. So there's our horizontal asymptote. We find the vertical asymptote by factoring. Okay, And nothing's removable, so we have a vertical asymptote at negative 2 and 2. Then we find the uh, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. When the numerator equals 0, y equals 0. So if the x-intercepts are negative 4 and 3, that would make the numerator equal 0. So our y-intercepts at 0, 3, okay? Our y-intercept is at 0, 3, and our x-intercept is at negative 4 and 3. That's how we do all that. Then we pick a couple points, okay? We, we, we plotted some points, find a few more points on the graph just by putting them in, put in numbers, and put in x's and get out y's. We end up with all this, and then we get that graph. Whew, that's a lot, all right? So let's do this. So let's do this. Let's find the horizontal asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and then maybe a couple points, okay? And then we'll plot that um, as best we can. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so here's what I got. My horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, and which, by the way, we have an x-intercept. We'll talk about that in a second. The vertical asymptotes are at x equals 1 and x equals 5. The x-intercept is at negative 3, and the y-intercept is at 3 fifths. So I obviously need some more. So you, you pick some points, okay? Pick some points. I would pick points. Like, I have a feeling this is going to look something like this over here. Like, this is, uh, and let me touch on this. Uh, a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. It will never cross a vertical asymptote, okay? I'll say that again. A graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. It will never cross a vertical asymptote. What happens in this function is it changes direction here, okay? It has a turning point. So it actually changes the direction it goes down. But for right now, this is going to go up like this, and then this okay, is going to start to go down like that. But we need the rest. There's more over here. So you pick some numbers, and you see what you get. I would pick numbers like you know, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, 7, and see what you get. Go ahead and pause the video and finish this problem. All right, so here's the other points I found. And you can see my scratch work is kind of all over the place here. Here's the points I found. And again, it's just a sketch. It's not going to be exactly perfect, but... It's close enough. I can see that I'm approaching those asymptotes there, and this is going down, and that's really ugly, but it's it's not too bad. Okay, uh, these these graphs are, are these can be time consuming, and this can be difficult. And we're going to work on this a lot in class. Um, using a rational function, so chemistry problem. For example, you work in a pharmacy that mixes different concentrations of saline solutions for its customers. Pharmacy has a supply of two concentrations, 0.5% and 2%. The function right here gives the concentration of the saline solution after adding x millimeters to the solution 
to 100 milliliters of the 2% solution. How many milliliters of the 0.5% solution must you add for the combined solution to have a concentration of 0.9%? So we set this up as what we put it in and then what we want it to be. We graph both of those. We look at the solution. It's going to be where they cross. Okay, so that gives us right there at 275. Sorry, that was Commissioner Gordon. He was looking for Batman. All right, so we get 275. That's the, the intersection. We get it as a table. We get all these different ways. So that's how much we should add of the 0.5% to get a 0.9%. Um, that's, that's, that's how we do it. All right. Um, let's say, let's look at that. And, and again, the setup that they gave us is really the, it's given. This isn't as hard as it looks, okay? Um, they are giving this, this setup to us. We have to understand everything that's going on. And then we have to know this is the hopeful outcome. So we let the calculator solve for X in this kind of real world problem. We need to know how to manipulate our view window or our table, but really the calculator does a lot of the heavy lifting here. Say we want to mix a 10% orange juice drink with 100% pure orange juice to make a 40% orange juice drink. This function right here gives us the concentration of Y in the drink after we add X number of gallons of the 10% drink to two gallons of pure juice. How much of the 10% drink must we add to get that 40% that we're looking for? And then if I wanted to drink uh, a drink that is 80%, would you need to add half as much as your answer in part A and explain? So you're going to have to find it for 40 and then find it for 80. Go ahead and try those and see what you get. All right, you're back. Hopefully for 5A, you got four gallons. Okay, four gallons. And then for 5B, no, we wouldn't have to add half as much, okay? We wouldn't have to add half as much. Uh, 0.8 intersects the graph at about 0.6, okay? So to have 80% orange juice, we would only need 0.6 gallons, okay? So much, much less. All right? Um, that's it for the notes, guys. This is complicated stuff. Please make sure your friends are seeing this. Please help people. Text them, tweet them, remind them. They need to see this stuff. It's not easy. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye.